Hello, uh, this is yet another mini lecture for the online uh, literature and composition class, English 1102. And the topic is staging and the glass menagerie. And um, in the unit, or module rather, on drama and plays, uh, one thing to keep in mind is staging. Um, that aspect of plays that's a little bit different from other forms of literature, the actual dramatizing of the work. And by way of introduction, in chapter 40 in the Kennedy textbook, uh, this is on page 1425, 1425, the editors uh, suggest that if your subject is a play you have actually seen performed, some differences will quickly become apparent, they write. Uh, differences between poetry, fiction, and other kinds of literature. They write that um, although, like a story or poem, a play in print is usually the work of a single author, a play on stage is different. A play not, that's not on the page, a play that's on stage may be the joint effort of 70 or 80 people, actors, directors, costumers, set designers, and technicians. Uh, the play on the page, like other literature, stays fixed and changeless. But a play in performance changes in many details, um, depending on the director. Um, they change from season to season, even from night to night, depending on the actor's expression. So um, we may not look at those um, in particular, but those are certainly differences that um, uh, to think about that um, one, that there's many, many creators for uh, play production and that there's change um, and adaptation uh, to those. Uh, that's something to think about, uh, but the other aspect uh, that we're focusing on here in looking at the glass menagerie is actually the staging itself, uh, more particularly the staging, um, which is different, um, a key difference. Um, one more comment by way of introduction, that when you write about a play, uh, your editors suggest reading critically, and that is, uh, don't just look at the dialogue, but everything in italics. Uh, stage directions, um, how the, the lines are read, and uh, descriptions of the settings can be very important to understanding the play. And uh, we'll be looking at a couple of those um, specific examples here in just a minute. But do remember, uh, those things refer to the staging. And... Um, you ignore those at your peril uh, when you're analyzing a play. Now, uh, something we do in the face-to-face -face class, uh, also by way of introduction to the module on drama, is I write, I put two um, columns on the bo on the whiteboard. Um, on the left is elements that drama shares with other literature. And on the right side are elements that are typical only of drama. And so, um, and then the class will call out various things. And so um, I'll just give you some of the things that are commonly called out during that class activity. On the left side, uh, elements that you can find, um, whether it's stories or novels or uh, poems or epics, uh, or plays, many shared elements that students call out include plot, characters, setting, tone, theme, style, symbolism, all kinds of things um, that you can just flip through the chapters in the Kennedy textbook and see many of those elements uh, drawn out uh, for you. Uh, and then on the right side, uh, the students are challenged to think of elements that are only typical of drama. So some of the distinguishing features students often name 
are costumes, props, the set, um, and those visual properties. Acting, <laughs> having actors, um, and action, things like mime and dance, and, and by that, uh, I just think students mean the dramatic expression, the fact that it is played out, um, rather than just being created in the reader's uh, mind. Uh, sometimes students mention the director, direction, blocking, which is the laying out of the movements on stage. And um, I had a student this semester mention stage presence, um, by which I, I, I think uh, the meaning of that is that connection with a live audience that the players on the stage make, and um, which you wouldn't have. Um, in a mediated work that, that's on the printed page. So uh, I think it's important to start off a module on drama thinking about um, the difference and the importance staging can have. And we're going to look specifically uh, at the Glass Menagerie um, to make that point, to look at the staging. So let's uh, turn there uh, together and I'm uh, skipping the uh, list of characters and going straight to the description of scene one. And this is on uh, page 1088 in the Kennedy textbook. This is scene one written out of the Glass Menagerie. And um, again, remember that the editors said pay attention to the descriptions of uh, scenes and these um, other things in italics that um, can be very significant. Let me just, I think, just reading a few words of uh, Tennessee Williams' um, description of the scene will show how important to the theme and to the meaning, to the significance of the play, the staging can be. Uh, let me read this to you. The Wingfield apartment is in the rear of the building, one of those vast hive-like conglomerations of cellular living units that flower as watery growths in the overcrowded urban centers of lower middle class population. <laughs> um, already, um, like a true poet, his words uh, are conveying uh, how much he sees in that scene. So, um, whether that can be staged, um, how effectively that can be staged, um, may depend on the production. But even the one we watched in class, the 1970s uh, film with Katherine Hepburn and um, the other uh, famous actors, uh, some of that, uh, I think, was brought across, um, particularly by the fire escape. Um, now, he, uh, Tennessee Williams goes on to wax poetical. Uh, he talks about the enslaved section of American society represented here, um, how they are in interfused mass of auto automatism and this machine-like uh, view of society. But he, uh, like a good poet, he, he does come down to some solid imagery, um, some actual things that can convey this feeling. And here's one, the fire escape. And this is seen in the, the production we watched in class. Um, but Tennessee Williams writes, the apartment faces an alley, uh, which is conveyed, I think, in some productions as that dark, dead-end uh, kind of uh, feeling. That, that is important to the play. But here, the fire escape. Uh, Tennessee Williams writes that it's a structure whose name is a touch of accidental poetic truth fire us to escape from the fire because these huge apartment buildings, he writes, are always burning with the slow and implacable fires of human desperation. So we certainly see some uh, burning fires of human desperation in this play. And um, 
Tennessee Williams writes, The fire escape is included in the set. That is the landing of it and the steps descending from it. So this uh, cold, metal, um, back entrance uh, to this rear apartment in an alley um, is uh, specified by the writer of the play, by the playwright, and actually staged um, in some productions. Now, um, something that uh, wasn't was not done in the um, movie, and I'm not sure that it's uh, how often it's done in productions either. Uh, Tennessee Williams suggested that there be a fourth wall, a transparent fourth wall of the building, and even transparent gauze porteries of the dining room arch, and that at the beginning of the play, this uh, kind of plastic, I guess. Um, wall rises and is not brought down again until the very end of the play. Um, I suppose that's suggesting uh, the fourth wall um, is lifted and, and may suggest our view into this intimate family life. Um, but whatever his purpose is, uh, that I don't think that's probably often done. Um, one thing that's heavily scripted into the play that... Um, was central to the film production we watched um, is this blown up photograph of the father that hangs on the wall of the living room. Tennessee Williams writes, it's facing the audience to the left of the archway. And he even describes this. Uh, it's a picture of a handsome young man. Um, he is gallantly smiling uh, as if to say, I will be smiling forever. And at the beginning of the play and um, throughout the production, we saw that um, portrait is central. Um, Tom even even says in the opening narration that there is a fifth character in the play who doesn't appear except in this larger-than-life photograph over the mantle. This is our father who left us a long time ago. Uh, and so... Um, his old records, I think, are there, and we hear Laura nostalgically listening to those. And so there's a absent uh, character, but we have that echo and memory um, of the father. So that is staged. Uh, that's something that, if you're watching the production, will be right there all the time. Um, before the audience, and uh, perhaps more easily forgotten if you're just reading through the script. Something else um, regarding the set um, is the uh, Paradise Dance Hall that is across the alley and later uh, near the end of the play. Um, Laura and Jim uh, begin dancing to music that's coming um, from across the alley. And so that actually has to be staged, um, the sound. And in the film, they even had lights. Uh, it looked like disco lights or something flashing from across the alley. They affected that. But um, that, uh, and whether that dance hall, that, paradise represents an empty illusion or some true heart call that's uh, broken for Laura. Whatever the case, it's scripted in. And so it it's, um, needs to be, if you're going to include that dance, it has to be staged and um, uh, may have significance and thematic meaning too. The um, so we have the uh, father's portrait and some other very important uh, items that I picked out, and, and there may be others. Um, of course, we know from the title and repetition that the glass menagerie itself is an uh, important uh, image here, uh, perhaps a symbol. Um, and... The unicorn that comes from that little collection, 
whose horn is broken, perhaps also representing uh, broken, shattered illusions or crushed hopes and dreams, and that loss of, um, um, I, I might leave it to you um, to figure out what, what it represents. Um, just romantic notions or uh, some true and important part of the human heart uh, that has been lost. And um, you'd have to dig that out and look at other um, aspects in the poem. But very important is that um, what that represents uh, to Laura in the play. And um, in the production we saw, they followed uh, the recommendations of Tennessee Williams in having the um, music, a recurring theme, uh, whenever that topic came up or the uh, glass menagerie um, came into the script, there'd often be that uh, delicate music playing um, almost from far away and giving more uh, significance to that. So we've mentioned before in short stories that the, the title uh, can be a clue to importance, um, images or symbols. Repetition can be important um, to imbuing things with significance. And here Tennessee Williams follows both those classic techniques. <laughs> Repetition and uh, putting it in the title and also in the staging of it now, um, our topic here, with that recurring theme, that music um, underscoring the importance of the glass menagerie. Um, another one that I think it was more apparent to me um, watching the film version was the candlestick that Laura bends over at the end of the play as Jim narrates and urges her blow out those candles um, in his perhaps in his imagination and that candlestick though is scripted into um, Amanda's words um, the mother uh, speaks of it and um, so probably of necessity that uh, candlestick will end up in most productions and uh, let me turn to the passage where Amanda talks about that. And so, um, on the printed page, we, we definitely have this, but we saw in the film there was actually this big, um, uh, I think it had uh, was a three-branched um, uh, candelabrum that had um, one, at least one of the branches was bent. Um, in that and so um, in the play Amanda gives this to Jim to carry uh, into the uh, other room uh, to talk with Laura it sits there between them uh, then of course um, at the end of the play in, in that staging Laura uh, was bending over it blowing out the candles but here's what Amanda says uh, she says uh, you go keep her company in the parlor. I'll give you this lovely old candelabrum that used to be on the altar at the Church of the Heavenly Rest. It was melted a little out of shape when the church burnt down. Lightning struck it one spring. Now, the um, I don't know how deep uh, you want to go with the imagery or symbolism of the lights and the candles, uh, the electricity, but we certainly know that it's significant to the plot um, that the lights have gone out because Tom did not pay the uh, power bill. And so the uh, public service, the um, power has been cut off. The public service has been suspended. And uh, this is scripted and this is part of the plot. But now they're in the dark, and so um, you can tie this into the theme, perhaps. And we've had some class discussions um, about the meaning of this, but the um, 
the idea of science and technology, um, electricity uh, came out in s probably in that int uh, author's introduction uh, as well as a few other places, if I can find them here. Um, uh, let's see, I believe it was when the power went out. Um, and this is... Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, yes, this is in scene uh, 7 in the textbook on page 1118. And the lights have just gone out. And the the um, Amanda says, isn't electricity a mysterious thing? Wasn't it Benjamin Franklin who tied a key to a kite? We live in such a mysterious universe, don't we? Some people say that science clears up all the mysteries for us. In my opinion, it only creates more. And so, um, referring to uh, this inventor, Benjamin Franklin, um, kind of a icon or image of industrialization and modernity, maybe. And so, um, we have again, uh, at the very end of the play, which is another significant uh, position for uh, uh, key, uh, you know, keys to the theme, for thematic highlights. Here's here's one uh, at the very end. Tom says, For nowadays the world is lit by lightning. Blow out your candles, Laura, and so goodbye. So perhaps you could find a contrast between uh, electricity and the modern world and the more romantic um, ideas, uh, dreamlike, um, more uh, spiritual perhaps because that candle was from a church I, I just don't know how deep you want to go with that but um, that candlestick was warped by lightning um, which hit a church so um, nonetheless that's something that's um, actually staged as well as scripted into the play uh, those are just some examples. Uh, to finish up here, I want to turn to Tennessee Williams' own words about how to stage the glass menagerie. This is on page 1132 um, of the uh, textbook. And Tennessee Williams says that expressionism and all other unconventional techniques in drama have only one valid aim, and that is a closer approach to the truth. And here... Um, we know from um, Tom's narration at the beginning of The Glass Menagerie, he calls it a memory play. And so um, expressionism is um, an artistic uh, approach that's different from strict realism. Here's what how Tennessee Williams describes it. Um, the strict... Uh, the straight, realistic play with its genuine frigid air and authentic ice cubes, its characters that speak exactly as the audience speaks, corresponds to the academic landscape and has the same virtue of a photograph likeness. So that's strict realism, surface realism. Um, but uh, Tennessee Williams says that um, it's more important to get to the heart truths and uh, this... Um, may come out in the script when Tom talks about the stage magician and how he gives um, illusion in the guise of truth, whereas the playwright, the dramatist, gives truth through illusion. And so um, it's uh, this is called a memory play, and the lighting and the music um, are not supposed to be done, staged stage or, or filmed realistically but uh, to give more um, uh, expressive of uh, the human heart or feelings or um, uh, invisible truths perhaps <laughs> um, here's some of the things um, specific things that Tennessee Williams said about how to stage the glass menagerie he mentions the screen device and um, 
he calls this the only important difference between the original and acting version of the play. It was left out. Um, he kept it in the original script. Um, it's even reproduced in the textbook. Uh, pictures and phrases that appear on this screen. Um, and he, Tennessee Williams' idea was to keep certain uh, thematic elements in the structure of the play because he said certain things were important to each scene to be remembered. He, said, he also writes, aside from this structural value, I think the screen will have a definite emotional appeal. Um, but this uh, unrealistic device was left out of uh, most productions. The music, however, wasn't, and uh, we referred to this, but Tennessee Williams writes, a single recurring tune, the glass menagerie, is used to give emotional emphasis to suitable passages. This tune is like circus music. Not when you are on the grounds or uh, in the immediate vicinity of the parade, but when you are at some distance and very likely thinking of something else. So he very, uh, he, he definitely has uh, a mood or tone in mind that this re this distant recurring theme should evoke. Um, he says he uh, he continues on for some time, but he says that. It expresses the surface vivacity of life with the underlying strain of immutable and inexpressible sorrow. When you look at a piece of delicately spun glass, you think of two things. How beautiful it is and how easily it can be broken. So uh, he's telling us something about his imagery and he wants that staged, communicated through the music. Um, he also talks about the lighting. He says the lighting in the play is not realistic. And in keeping with the atmosphere of memory, the stage is dim. And um, he writes about shafts of life, shafts of light focused on selected areas or actors. Um, he said the light upon Laura should be distinct from the others, having a peculiar pristine clarity as light used in early religious portraits of female saints or Madonnas. It's a memory play, and um, it's showing us something of the psychology of, um, of uh, Tom's memory. Uh, and so he even goes so far as to say that, um, compare it to a painting like El Greco's, where the figures are radiant in an atmosphere that is relatively dusk, dusky. Um, he said that could be used throughout the play. So um, he doesn't want it staged um, realistically. He wants it staged um, as a memory or uh, more expressive um, uh, production. So... Um, he says a free imaginative use of light can be of enormous value. So that's his um, production notes for the Glass Menagerie, how he would like to see it, uh, to see the play staged. Um, and that will vary um, from director to director, from production to production. So in conclusion, um, it's good to keep in mind that many of the of the Staged items are actually scripted. That glass menagerie, the little unicorn, the portrait of the father. Um, some could are brought in and left out by various um, in various productions. I think it's important then to be clear in your own mind when you're writing. Uh, if you're writing about a specific uh, production of the play, um, you can refer to it. Um, and um, if you're writing about the written version, um, then um, you'll definitely be on safe ground. But be, be clear in your mind um, if uh, whether it's something that is scripted or that you saw in a, a film or production and refer to them accordingly. Um, but in conclusion, it's very important to... Keep in mind the visual aspects and those elements that are peculiar uh, to drama, as well as um, 
you would to the things that you could write about in any kind of um, literary work. Thank you for listening. I hope that helped you. And you can apply this, these, as always, you can apply these ideas to any play that you're uh, reading or writing about. And um, keep in mind the importance of the staging in those um, works of literature. Thank you.